Hi, Hi folks. How are you? Yeah. Um, yeah um, Kate, my friend here, um, she's got a testimony, but she's just a bit shy in front of the crowd, so I'll just sort of tell the story as much as I know. She can correct me if, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, someone had... Can I talk about your life a bit? Okay. <laughs> Kate was heavily involved in drugs, in ice, uh, deal, dealing as well, yep. Um, she'd been given a, a spiked cocktail, was it? A spiked cocktail, which put her in a coma. Um, she ended up in hospital, died three times, is that correct? And they were wheeling the morgue trolley over to pick her up, and she had the cross around her neck, uh, not really wearing a cross very much, from what I understand. And um, as they were wheeling the trolley over, she opened her eyes, and she remembers grabbing hold of the cross and saying, uh, God, if you're there, now would be a good time to show up. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, they'd realised that she wasn't actually dead, but because she was in a coma, she had to learn to talk and walk again, and she was in a wheelchair, is that right? On the bed, sorry. Um, anyway, um, as time went on, a friend of mine was talking to her, and he said um, something along the lines of, I've got a friend who's into God, and I don't know, but it seems to work, is that right? Um, so my friend, he said, can I get him to ring you? She obviously agreed. And um, my friend got hold of me. And he said, look, I've got this friend, Kate. I said, yes, I know her. She, he said, uh, can you ring her? I said, yes. I was out for tea, so I spent some time in prayer. Uh, I had to drive to a Bible study group with uh, Pastor Red. And um, I prayed on the way. And God was showing me things. And I thought, OK, I'll ring her up when I get to the meeting. I rang her up, and when I rang her up, she was talking really slow. Like, I mean, really slow. <laughs> and um, you could hear that there was problems, and there was fear, rejection, a whole lot of things in her voice. We spoke, I said, look, normally I'd befriend you and all that, but I'm sort of in a hurry, forgive me. I said, do you mind if I just show you what God showed me? And um, she said yes, spoke into her life, and things that she did when she was a kid to do with her father and her grandfather and things that had happened to her which were not nice things. Um, and she sort of got a bit blown away as I suppose everybody does with the words that were given. And that sort of dragged her into believe a little bit more into God. I said to her at the end, I said, I believe if you give your life to the Lord, you'll be healed instantly. And her answer to that was, I've already done it twice before. I said, okay, well, I'm just telling you what God showed me. Anyway, she was going to ring me the next day, but two days went past, and she rang me and she said, I am in the fight for my life. And I said, you don't know how true what you're saying is. Uh, in the end, we agreed to do the, the prayer together, for forgiveness and for the Lord to come into our life. She said, I don't know, I've done it before. I said, you said it with your mouth, but you didn't do it with your heart. She agreed that was true. Um, Oh, the next thing was, I said, just repeat this prayer. She says, I don't pray out loud. <laughs> so we're running into all these things. I said, you're going to have to sort something out. The thing is, <laughs> she ended up praying with me, and she said it out aloud, and she asked Jesus Christ to come into her life, and at that moment, she stopped for a minute, and she said, I'm, I'm floating, I'm feeling like I'm floating on the clouds. I said, yeah, that's just God letting you know he's there. It's just God letting you know he's real. And she said, I feel really good. And I just instantly started to notice that her speech had picked up, that she was talking normally. And I went, OK, something going on here. So she kept talking. And I said, you haven't noticed yet, have you? She said, what? I said, well, you're talking normal. Um, she started walking normal. Is that correct? She had fear about the house. We broke off a whole lot of stuff. We prayed with her. She had fear about the house because the house that she was living in was a drug house, basically. And I said, look, I just believe that the Lord will protect you. That the Holy Spirit will come in, the angels that we were talking today will come in and protect that property and protect you. Uh, I don't think since then has any, nobody has come to this house to try and score drugs. Um, 
Yeah. And this is all just happening like four weeks. Um, she's feeling, she was feeling more comfortable out of the house because there was fear. Um, she's now feeling a lot more comfortable at home. And gone to reading the word, pestering me every day. Uh, <laughs> nah, it's good. I love it. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I guess we just wanted to encourage you. We've been trying to get her to talk, but she's just a little bit shy, so not so much when you're on your own. But we just want to give the glory to the Lord. Yeah. Right? And I've got to tell you, for those of you that are sitting down and that don't believe that God can touch lives or change people, this woman had a drug addiction that left her instantly, that people around her were doing drugs that was making her sick. Now, we hear of these things, but I've got to tell you, our God is possible and he's able to do anything that we ask. Our God has power and authority over all things and it says darkness cannot overtake him. And I've got to tell you, if there's darkness in you, get God in you. Because you get God in you, mate, the darkness will be gone. Praise the Lord, eh?